It is Labor Day, and uh, I know all of you are contemplating the uh, challenge ahead. Uh, I'm talking about specifically your family and friends expect you guys to produce wonderful, wonderful food. And I thought it might be helpful is uh, I get a lot of questions centered around one kind of main topic. Uh, I kind of call it the gas or gear acquisition syndrome. <laughs> and uh, uh, somehow or rather, a lot of the conversations I have with people online and in person revolves around equipment. And uh, I call it gas or gear acquisition syndrome because you guys have heard me say repeatedly that it's never about the pit. pit. It's always about the pit master. So yeah, I, I thought what I tried to do my is, excuse when it doesn't come out well, though, Harry. <laughs> no, you just tell them that you have a bad instructor. Harry did teach you. <laughs> That's what happens. So I always tell my students, right? If, if the food comes out absolutely fantastic, you just say, hey, I I did it all myself and I, I learned it you know, myself. But if it's really bad, you say, the dang guy in that bar, he taught me all the wrong things to do. <laughs> so that's how it works. Labor Day is uh, stressful for a lot of my friends and students and, and patrons because uh, a lot of times you are expected to cook. And uh, in general, uh, if they know that you are my, you know, you watch me on YouTube or you've taken my class, uh, you know, they hand you the tongs and they expect you to know what to do. So the idea I wanted to have this morning is kind of talk a little bit in general about the pros and cons of different pits and then help you address any issue that you might be having, whether it's a temporary issue with accessories or it's a systemic issue you have with your pit. For example, I'll talk about a smoke fire this morning and why I think that it's got its upside and downside. And there is no perfect pit out there. But what I thought I'd try to do is kind of talk you through some of the thermodynamics, some of the design considerations and some of the kind of pros and cons of the different pits. Now, obviously, I can talk one hour on one pit, so I just wanted to kind of touch on your pain points this morning and set you on the stage for success for Labor Day. And that can cover things like, okay, what am I going to cook for Labor Day? Uh, how many people are coming? How much time do I have? And uh, how much effort do I want to put in? Do I want to go fire my big offset? and 500 gallon and cook one brisket. <laughs> so after this session, uh, for those of you who can join me, I want to make an announcement. I'm going to go support Pitmaster Winnie from Smoke Queen Barbecue. She's at the uh, Little Tokyo in downtown LA. There's a big uh, Sunday event. It happens every Sunday. There's about, I think, 100 old vendors that go out and basically it's like a, like a food farmer's market selling food. So she's going to be there. So I know all of you will be asking me a lot about her brisket. Her food is absolutely fabulous. If you are local in, in LA, you have time today, I suggest you swing by. I think she's going to sell out fast. So I, I tell myself I, I should finish this session and, and drive to LA. It's about 45 minutes away and make sure that I'm in line before all her food sells out. I, I've never actually uh, tasted her food. I've, I've cooked with her many, many times in many collabs. In fact, I'm getting ready to post another collab. I just posted another collab uh, yesterday. But uh, I, I, I want to try like the plate that uh, the public gets. And it's, it's going to have a little bit of everything. And if you've seen her pictures, uh, they're absolutely amazing. She's been written up in the New York Times Magazine, uh, Eater, and so on. So I, I think that in terms of women pitmaster, she is going to be the new tour de force, not just conquering California. But I think that in a short period of time, she will be one of the mega barbecue stars on the national circuit. Her food uh, is exceptional. Very few I've had it. Women it is, it is exceptional. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, she's got that that zeal and that glint in her eye. <laughs> that, that, that is unmistakable. When you meet her, she basically has barbecue sauce flowing in her veins. That's pretty much how it is. You know? And she has the energy, the, uh, the determination, and the motivation to crank out, you know, like what, 20 to 30 briskets every weekend. So even I, I, you know, I admit I, I don't have the energy to be able to do that. Hey, Harry, uh, you mentioned the smoke fire before. Uh, are you still on the Gen 1 first generation smoke fire? Uh, yeah, I bought two smoke fires, which I love, and uh, they both have the retrofit. The retrofit is the, the uh, what do you call it, the auger, yeah, well, and uh, what do you call the slider for the pellet. Yeah, so I have those same, two retrofitted. Because the small one, well, they're both on. They were on sale this weekend for 200 bucks off. If I wait, 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 wait. Wow. Again, 
I would have bought wow. this more seven hundred ninety nine bucks. It was a thousand dollars. That's pretty good. Uh, oh yeah. I, I mean, again, right? I, I I don't want to be a lightning rod for controversy, even though I I am. Uh, I always tell people that every pit has pros and cons, right? And even something like the pits and spits, a twenty five hundred dollar pit, even a hasty bake, another two two three thousand dollars, even the cook shacks for four five thousand dollars. Uh, sudden price for ten thousand dollars. They they all have pros and cons, and and I I just kind of wanted to say that that uh, it depends on what your criteria is, right? So if you let's say you want to have convenience, you want to have push button cell phone ability, you want the best possible result. Right? There are many many pellet cookers out there. You saw me cook with the Z grill, the Silverback. Uh, I cook with the yeah, pits and spits and green mountain and so on. Uh, the smoke fire, in my opinion, right, and I will tell you this, has the best result. Period. You've seen the the smoke ring that on my on my channel. You've seen the appearance. I, I didn't Photoshop that. That's just straight from the pit. So it's as good as my Weber Smoky Mountain without all the ha hassle of you know, cleaning and setting up and running a blower on it. It's just a lot of work to run a bullet smoker. But a pellet cooker, as I get older and lazier, <laughs> one, one button is definitely definitely a plus. So a lot of times when I shoot my videos, right, I want to focus on the recipe. You guys have seen my hundreds of videos on how to set up a pit. So there's no need for me to every time on every video explain to you, okay, now the wood goes on and goes under now, the charcoal goes on top and great. So you guys know all that. So what I want to try to do with my channel is focus on information that's useful to you without repetition. Cooking on a pellet cooker allows me to pop the meat right in the cooker, focus on the teaching and the cooking and the methodology and not have to fuss over like, you know, okay, my, my temps are off. Uh, you know, I have to go fuss over the pit. And I find that the smoke fire uh, has a few disadvantages but in all, if I'm looking for performance, pure performance and the best result, championship result that I would be happy to turn it into a big contest, uh, that one is the number one. Harry, as part of this, one, one question I would have <coughs> is <coughs> with all the different pits out there, offsets, stick burners, smoke, oh, pellet grill, what differences in technique do you need to have when using these different cookers? Because many of us have different types of cookers. Some of us have offsets, some of us have eggs, some of us have pellet. What modifications to our technique do we need to make for each of those? Is that something you can cover on? Yeah, I, I, actually, Catherine, I took my class, right? So Catherine, you were aware that I spoke to the three factors of pit management and fire management control. So just let me briefly summarize it. So before I can talk about the pit, right? You need to talk a little bit about the mechanics or how how does a pit work? So uh, the basic concept behind a pit is essentially three things, right? You have intake, you have fuel, and you have exhaust. If you like, can break it down as simply as I can for you, three things, right? You master three things, intake, fuel, and exhaust. Let's talk about the intake. Intake is basically where oxygen enters your pit. And there are different configurations, different airflow configurations, and different uh, locations of the airflow. Then you have the fuel. The fuel is a mixture of different kinds of fuel. You have pellets, you have wood, briquettes, charcoal, you have wood, and any other things like char coconut charcoal and what have you, right? So uh, you need to have an understanding of the fuel source that you have because the fuel source accomplishes two very important objectives. Number one is the BTU. So you need BTU first. So BTU can come from electricity, right? It can come from gas, it can come from solar. It can come from any source. You need the BTU, which is British Thermal Unit. If I'm not mistaken, it's like heat one pound of water for one degree, something like that, right? But it's a measure of, of BTU. Second thing you need to understand is the thing called smoke, the component of smoke. And now I'll, I'll talk about smoke in a second. And then the third thing is called the exhaust. So, so before we even talk about equipment, we have to kind of back up a little bit and ask ourselves, what <laughs> is the parameters that you need to kind of finesse to create great barbecue. And it's basically the intake, the fuel, and the exhaust. Now, the next thing you're gonna ask is, okay, those three things, right? What kind of vessel do I put it in? And I need to take you back to the day one. Day one is shovel, chicken wire, hold in the ground. <laughs> you guys saw my video with Tootsie, right? Tootsie Tomanes, such a charming, charming lady. Uh, barbecue legend. I am so privileged to, to, to actually know her and then meet her in person. 
she's probably pushing 90 years old. Wow. And she's out there working as a janitor in the school district. On Friday night, she comes back from work, picks up that shovel, and goes to a barbecue restaurant in Lexington, Texas. If you've never been to Tootsie, I, I, I highly, highly recommend you make a trip down to Texas. Even if you fly down there, drive an hour out to the place, stand in line at 4 a.m., definitely, definitely is a bucket list experience. I highly encourage all of you on this call to do that.